you, John. Uh, let's go forward here a little bit. Yeah, so no, it's great to be back uh, in Crow Park here. Uh, as a Kildare man, I don't get here too often late on in the year, so it's, it's great to be here. Um, yeah, today I want to go through some of uh, like a geosystems technology, but also introduce everyone to, to Hexagon. Uh, maybe people know about Hexagon and understand what Hexagon is all about, um, but that's really what I want to, want to do here today. And I'm also going to be joined on stage by Kevin Holmes, who's the Senior Vice President of Hexagon Smart Solutions, and we'll be going through about what Hexagon's Smart Solutions entail. So just Hexagon at a glance, um, uh, who are we? So we, uh, we're absolutely a technology organization and, and have been providing solutions into multiple different industries for a long, long time. So uh, um, we, we, we invest about 12% of, of our net sales right back into R&D to ensure that we're continuously investing and innovating and bringing new products out into the marketplace. Those markets that we serve, survey uh, and engineering, building construction, utilities, public safety, oil and gas mining, agriculture, it goes on and on and on. We have about 18,000 employees in 60 countries across the world. And again, uh, with financials and strong, we are a profitable organization again with about three and a half billion sales uh, globally. And a lot of uh, what Hexagon has done throughout the years is acquire organizations. So we have obviously have organic growth internally, but then if we want to go out and get ourselves involved in different, um, in different industries or want to supplement what we have internally, as a group, we'll go out and we'll acquire different organizations. Um, and a few of the recent organizations, ju uh, uh, just to make a point of it, Leica Geosystems was acquired by Hexagon in 2005. Um, and again, a, a lot of organizations have joined the group, but recently in the last year, I want to just um, touch on a few notable ones. Um, so here we have uh, Luciad Technologies, was acquired earlier on in the year, and it's a, an international supplier of geographic information system tools, and is recognized as a worldwide leader in high performance geospatial situational awareness. And, and later on, you'll see a, vi a video um, in my next slide about, about what they're capable of doing. I think we're talking about autonomous stuff and there's been a few comments on autonomous vehicles and robots and stuff and, and just earlier on again in the year uh, Hexagon acquired an organization called Autonomous Stuff and again they are a world leader in supplying components used with autonomy systems uh, again such as autonomous vehicles and in the last couple of weeks Hexagon have acquired Br uh, Brixis so uh, again uh, a product that's best known for feature-rich combination of 2D drawings, 3D modeling, um, and with this acquisition, we're really adding more solutions to our growing BIM portfolio, and really that target of the AEC market. So again, the advantage of Hexagon, we have the sensors, so the sensors to go out there and capture the as-is, the as-built. We have that software, where we bring that information in, so we can action the as-planned and as-designed. And then the smart solutions fuse those, both those worlds together, transforming how uh, critical industries tackle increasingly difficult challenges. So here is some of the, the products that we have um, currently out in the marketplace. A lot of people here will recognize them from um, the, the solutions for mapping above ground, like our UAV. I think UAV was mentioned earlier on here um, today on a couple, a couple of occasions. So again, we have UAV systems that, we, that, that can go out there and do sort of autonomous flights and come back and land and deliver that information back, um, back, in, back into us. We have our large uh, aerial cameras, so like I said, the Ordnance Surveys and these types of organizations using these, capturing massive amounts of data. Um, I'm not going to go through all these, but some of the, some of the um, most important ones, uh, a recent acquisition actually was IDS, and if we see here the detection systems and the GPR, I think we were talking about X-ray vision earlier on, and Martin was speaking that. Well, this is actually mapping underneath the ground, understanding what's below the surface, so a type of X-ray vision we have there. And we were talking about uh, uh, machine control earlier on, and again, we have uh, machine control systems there that we can put these models on and automatically go out and actually create um, with dozer systems, and we'll see a little bit of that later on. But also, Martin mentioned about having sensors so that people around the machines um, could, could be identified, and actually, we do have that technology. There's a sensor in the machine, each work person has a sensor on them, and it, it knows how far they are, and it starts beeping once anyone comes close. So that kind of technology is there, um, and it's good to see yourself speaking about that. So, wrong button. 
So I'm going to try and uh, speak about the themes of this conference here. And what I'm going to do is uh, try and hit most of them that I can here. So we're talking about the Internet of Things and such, but smart cities. So to have a smart city, we need to understand it. We need to map it. We need to know exactly what's there. And the top, top left-hand corner here, we can see the, uh, the Pegasus system, and it's on top of a GPR system. So this can drive around mapping above ground and below ground at the same time. We also have a mobile backpack, which means that someone can just wear this. It has laser scanning, imaging technology, IMU technology, and GNSS technology uh, embedded into it, again, collecting these massive data sets. I mentioned the aerial um, camera systems that we have, so being able to go out and create these massive amounts of data, flying over a city with oblique cameras, LiDAR, IR sensors, and then bringing this data into a 3D visualization so that we can we can really understand what's there. And that is Lucia down in the bottom right-hand corner there. Reality technologies. Just in the last couple of years, we've launched two new laser scanners out into the marketplace and have been really well accepted in the marketplace. We have the BLK360, again, a, a system that, that was, uh, we, we worked with Autodesk to bring this, this system to the marketplace. Um, and again, very, very quick at collecting data, has three cameras on it, collects a full um, um, dome image. It also has a thermal imaging camera on it as well. So uh, very, very good uh, technology to be able to use on building sites. And then we have the RTC 360, again, just launched in the last couple of months. Revolution has new technology to be able to track itself in space. Uh, it's got a technology called Viz, visual uh, inertial system, so that when you move it and walk through your environment, it tracks where it's going, so it's able to stitch all these scans together very easily. And we're getting a lot of fantastic feedback about this new product. So automation and robotics, another theme here. So I think we, I just mentioned earlier on, we're able to put um, the, the, data, the data model, say, of a new road or whatever, into a control panel, onto a, a machine control, or onto a dozer like this, the, the dozer understands, using GNSS, using tilt sensors, using everything else, understands where it is in space, and all the guy needs to do is drive it. At the moment, drive it, but when we're talking about robotics, like Savannah was speaking about earlier on, you might necessarily need the driver there. He just, it just goes off, and it's, and it's done automatically. And, of course, autonomous vehicles having L LiDAR sensors, GNSS, IMU, all these sensors working together um, to create a product like an uh, autonomous vehicle. Drones and geospatial technologies. We've recently joined up with uh, DGI. DGI, the biggest UAV manufacturer in the world, pretty much. I think there's like 5,000 engineers now creating these systems. They build the, the, the hardware. We put the, the GPS, the positioning sensors on it. We, we take over the gimbals uh, and put our sensors on it, so our imaging, um, cameras, whatever. And in the future, I can imagine um, LiDAR systems being put on this and creating this. And again, our bread and butter, our total stations, GPS, laser scanners, um, and what have you as well. And then finally, uh, the BIM innovation. So we have, we talked about the laser scanners. It's fine being able to go out and collect it. What do you do with that data then? We've got plugins to all these authoring tools like Autodesk, Briscad, all these different products where we can bring that scan data in and make it very easy to, uh, to work with. Once that's designed, the model is designed, being able to bring that out into the field um, in an IFC format uh, and bring that out for the guys in the field then to be able to set that out. So that's pretty much where I'm going to do. I'm going to hand over now over to Kevin Holmes, and he's going to talk about um, Hexagon Smart Build Solutions and, and where we're going in the future. Which one do you say? Press the green one. The one above it, yeah. So uh, good morning, everybody. As uh, John says, my name's Kevin Holmes, and I'm going to maybe reference a few of the previous presentations. So Martin talked about mixed reality, the massive amount of data coming, looking forward. Um, John talked about you need to capture your real world, capture the sensors so you can mix that up. Savannah talked about robots, how all that comes together. What I'm going to talk a little bit about is how that can be brought back together in this BIM sense, really being back to the theme of the conference. So I think we've all seen this manufacturing, construction, we're not doing very well. Um, but what's the root cause of that? Well, the root cause of that generally is a lot of disconnected systems. The corporate, the project, the, the site, the design office, the subcontractor, the general contractor, each one of these different disciplines trying to talk to each other. And we've also talked about how we could bring that together in a better environment for them to work and the need to bring the sensors to collect the actual data and mix it with the, um, 
with the uh, design. So here we're just going to look at what's really impacting the industry. And again, I think we've seen this. Digitalization, that's impacting the industry. We've got to have a digital twin. We've got to have something that represents the real world mixed up with the virtual world. Very important, it's got to be mobile. I think everybody who works needs a mobile experience now, Dave, so we all expect it. And if you want to link the office and the site, the site's going to need a mobile experience. And then this is the biggest thing that I think has not been said. It's got to be simple. If you can't use it within 30 minutes, it won't get adopted. So many of the old technologies don't fit the future world. It's really got to be a simple experience. So what might it look like if you're socializing this, and I'm going to call it a building information management, 3D design, 3D design 4D schedule, and 5D cost. What might it look like? Well, in this case, I'm suggesting, you know, you probably want to put in the cloud one connected environment, the design, your schedule, and your cost element. Something, again, that's really been missed. You really need to bring that cost element into the virtual reality, because that's actually what's going to drive a lot of the, um, the adoption. So what might that look like? Well, here we've got a model. Across the top, you've got tasks that are needing to be done, interacting with a virtual world. You've got budget, current actual, and um, forecast budget to complete, so you can start managing that. And you've got whether you're on time or not. Are we on schedule? Are we behind schedule? And then at the bottom here, we've got a schedule. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce a term called work packages, which is from the oil and gas industry, which is the oil and gas industry use work packages to link all these things together. Once you've done that, maybe you want to see 4D sequencing. You want to see the virtual design. Well, in this case, you know, because you built a work pack, and in a work pack it has the graphics, the model. It has the time I want to start, the time I want to finish. It's got all the documentation I need to do the work. It's probably got some virtual training experience. Everything I need, as you run along that timeline, each work package can then be the representation of time and show you the building. You then probably want to bring that together with what's happening at site. I've told, I've known, I now know when I want to build something. The next step is I need to tell everybody on site what to do. So they get a mobile device, iPad, mobile phone, they get a task and then they get all the instructions to execute that task. So again, goes to some of, the, some of the previous discussions. Once they finish the work, they then on the mobile device say, I've done. I think you've got that work pack, you can detail that to any level. I've done my work. That is immediately fed back into the, into the system to give you a representation of status of the project. Today, most projects spend a month collecting all the data together to produce a piece of paper that tells you where, where you were one month ago. This is an instantaneous update of progress, giving you a much better opportunity to, ad to adapt the plan. You also want to be able to manage any issues in this virtual world. And then also you want to visualize where you are on cost. So here's some kind of mobile device you'd expect to see. Steps that you've got to do within a, within a work. Here we're laying out foundations. So lay out the foundations using a total station to actually be more accurate. What does that do? That makes it seven times more productive, higher quality and less rework. Go do the form prep, place the concrete, do the stripping, do the inspection. Each one of those steps can get a progress status and then you can look and mark up drawings, make issues, etc. But also visualize where you are on cost and where you are on schedule back in this 3D model. Now, this is the, back into the 3D model, but again, it could be into a virtual world which is wrapped around you in the office, yeah? So it's about, it's about the technology people were talking about, which I thought was a little bit futuristic. This is about bringing it back into this BIM world of what you can do today and how it will be adopted in that world in the future. And this is a, um, a, a cost or a schedule um, impact. And as you move along time, you can look backwards and you can look forwards. If I carry on with this current velocity of work, will I meet the schedule or will I miss the schedule? If I miss the schedule by 10 days, what is the cost of the project? All of that information linked together so that any change to design, schedule, or cost interacts on the other one is a way that you can really drive cost savings inside your projects. And then you maybe want to use these total stations to help you place work, or maybe you want to scan to bring the real world back into the model. So in this case, automatically place the points that are going to be needed to do site layout, um, or visualize it with a scan 
point at one of those scans and overlay the model and scan. Probably not the clearest, but this is a, a model and a scan placed over the top of each other. And again, we're starting to be able to automatically identify where you're building in the wrong place because the scan doesn't match the model. 100% of what I'm talking about is available today without anything on any machine except access from the cloud. So the site can have it, you can have it, and it can be actually adopted and turned on on a project really quickly. No IT cost, no IT learning. And then finally, the performance. How's the, project, how's the project financially performing? So here you want to get all of your S curves, your subcontract management, your change management. It's about bringing the whole of this experience into one environment so that you can be more effective in the way in which you execute a project. So really linking the 3D design, 4D schedule, and 5D cost tightly together to optimize the project planning. Removing silos of information, um, lowering risk of actually delivering the project, and giving you early visibility. This wouldn't be a backward-looking view of what's happening on the project. It's a predictive forward-looking view. And that's the big change by bringing that in an integrated environment that you look ahead and know where an issue will occur so you can adjust to avoid that issue. And we have a product that we're currently bringing to market called Hexagon Smart Build. Really, it's about real-time insight that's going to drive a predictable outcome on your project, being, allowing you to avoid the 6% rework that occurs on every project, allowing you to avoid the two-thirds of time people are unproductive on a construction site, waiting or looking for information, avoiding the time slips where I haven't finished a task, but the next team turns up to do the work. A predictable outcome on both budget and schedule. And if you can increase that, then you can see a major increase in the bottom line of a company's business. We're working with many, many companies. Skanska's one. I mean, Skanska's probably one of our largest sponsors in getting this product moving. Really good customer to work with. They're adding their best work processes and adapting the product. Not just saying we're going to adapt the product to what we do, they're adapting to a new way of working, and that's a real big change. So please come and see us. We're just behind the curtain at booth 34. There's a little bit of um, presentation we can show you there. Um, very interested to talk. So that's from me. Uh, I think we're just about on time, so thank you very much. <laughs>